Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense, and today we'll compare between the absolute refractory period and the relative refractory period, so let's get started. This is part of my comparisons playlist, by the way. Today's video is just some excerpts from a longer video, so the original work is called The Ionic Basis of Action Potential, and you'll find this video in my physiology playlist on YouTube. My physiology playlist has more than 40 videos so far. During rest, the inside of the membrane is negative, but upon activation, aka depolarization, more accurately, reversal of polarity, the inside of the membrane becomes more positive. During rest, the membrane is resting, no duh, and the inside of the membrane is negative. Why? Because positive is leaving, potassium efflux. Then, action potential happens. Now, sodium is rushing in through the fast, voltage-gated sodium channels. Sodium comes in, sodium is positive, the inside of the membrane will become more positive. Next, repolarization. Oh, I know repolarization, it's potassium. Shut up. First, you have to stop and close the sodium channels. All right, stop it. And then you open the potassium channels. All right, potassium is leaving. The positive is leaving, leaving the inside more negative. But because these potassium channels are slow at opening and slow at closing, you will overshoot. Instead of reaching negative 90, you will overshoot to negative 100. Until some beautiful inward rectifying potassium channels open, letting the potassium in. So what happens in depolarization is that you start to open some sodium channels, sodium comes into the cell, and when the positive enters into the nerve, the nerve will be activated, hashtag depolarization. Pause and review. You see these sodium channels have gates. These gates are not just metaphors, they exist, they are physical, and therefore they have inertia. Yes, they are fast, but they are not fast ad infinitum. The action potential follows the all or none law. What does that mean? It means there is no sorta kinda ish, cause ish is a wish. I'm either fully excited or not. There is no 10% excited or 50% excited. I don't play these games. If you give me a robust stimulus, a threshold, I will give you my maximal excitability, 100%. But if you give me something that's below threshold, I will not respond at all. To borrow a phrase from my hero, Dr. Thomas Sowell, there are no half-baked notions with the action potential. It's all or none. I'm either up or down. I don't dance on the stairs. Okay, Medicosis, I'll give you sub-threshold. What will you do? I'm not gonna be excited at all. Okay, Medicosis, I'll give you threshold. I'll give you 100% response, 100% excitability. Okay, Medicosis, I'll give you supra threshold. I'll still give you the same 100%. It's either all or none. So what is the refractory period? Well, it's a period in which the nerve is refractory. No duh. What does refractory mean? Means it's not responsive to stimulation. It's not being stimulated. Why do we need this? To protect the nerve from extremely rapid, repetitive stimulation which can kill the stinking nerve. And we have two types. We have absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. Absolute refractory period versus relative refractory period. What the flip is that? It's a refractory period. So the definition is, it's a period, well, no duh, of time during which a second action potential cannot occur because I'm busy in the first action potential. Right, I'm busy. Okay, stop it. You mean I cannot excite you for the second time? Nope, you have to wait, no matter how strong the stimulus is. Where does the absolute refractory period extend? It extends from the firing level, the beginning, to the end of the early part of repolarization. So it's the depolarization phase and the first one third of the descending limb. Why does this happen? Because inactivation of the sodium channels. When these gates close, you cannot open them instantaneously because there's something called inertia in physics they have to wait until they're able to open again so you have to wait how about relative refractory period well i'm still refractory period so i'm a period of time during which the second action potential is hard unless you give me something super something super normal something super something stronger than usual only then i will start listening to you and this starts from the end of the absolute refractory period to the end of the hyperposition before you reach the resting membrane. Why does this happen? Because some sodium channels have returned to their resting state. Oh, I'm ready to be opened again. Your nerve has a refractory period. 
Same thing with your heart muscles. It has refractory periods and we divide them into absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. Sometimes we call the absolute effective refractory period. The difference between the action potential in the nerve and in the cardiac muscles is this beautiful plateau. I can make an entire video just about the plateau because it's so significant. If you want to learn more about antiarrhythmics, antiangel, antihypertensives, antihyperlipidemics, diuretics, and digoxin, check out my cardiac pharmacology course on my website medicosisperfectionalist.com. I also have an autonomic pharmacology course on the same website. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Sanitas, where medicine makes perfect sense.